Thank you, guys. <clears throat> good morning. It is uh, it's good to be with you this morning. Good to see you this morning. Um, I, uh, I don't feel like um, I can go further this morning without us maybe just even taking a second to pray for uh, what's going on in the world. Uh, we, have, uh, we have some of our own folks uh, right there in the middle of that. Um, you know, so um, it's my guess. We're not supposed to know where they are, and we don't know technically where they are, but uh, we assume that that's where they are in this moment. And, uh, you know, and just in general, uh, you know, what's going on. I mean, it's, it's hard. It's hard to know and hard to understand. For me, it's hard to understand uh, a lot of it. Um, you know, I mean, it's war. You know, war is what it is. It's, it's not a pretty thing to begin with. But, uh, you know, despite that, you know, on top of that, um, you have all these things such as, you know, there's, you know, uh, the people, you know, churches, bodies of believers and, uh, you know, trying to stand up and, and, and still share the gospel and not be ashamed and all those things, all those things that we've seen in Scripture, you know, that, uh, you know, there will be a day, you know, so to speak, you know, that, you know, that today, that day is today for, for some of them. So uh, I, I just feel like it's appropriate for us to pray and then, uh, and then we'll share in the Scriptures together today. Uh, to talk about uh, serving one another. Let, let's pray together. God, we don't, um, we don't always understand um, the things that are happening in this world, uh, but Lord, you do. And uh, Lord, not only do we not understand them, but you understand them in ways that no one does. Um, Lord, I just pray, I do pray for the believers, uh, both in the Ukraine and Russia, um, Lord, I pray for the safety of people uh, all over that are involved uh, in, in this in so many different ways. God, I, I lift up to you. I lift up to you the church at large, your church. Um, God, I pray that somehow in some way, in many ways, Lord, that you would use your church, Lord, to serve the people uh, in these countries, that, Lord, you would be seen, that your light would be shown. Uh, Lord, that people would know who Jesus is because uh, they have a friend that's not afraid to share, uh, to love, to care, to pray with them, uh, to be there for them, to serve them well. Uh, God, I, I pray, Lord, that that would challenge us today. Uh, Lord, in our calling here with, in the middle of freedom, uh, in the middle of an opportunity, Lord, to, to do what we may with the things that you've given us that we take for granted, God, I just pray. Uh, that, uh, that we would make our time count, that we would make our gifts count. Um, Lord, just help us to see that. and Help us to see the opportunity in front of us. God, thank you, uh, Lord, that we can come and that we can ask for you to intervene. And God, we do. We pray that you would intervene uh, and go before and protect those people that need your protection. Um, God, just have your hand on them. And uh, God, thank you uh, that we can ask all these things in your son's name. Amen. Crazy, crazy times. Um, we have been in a series called "What Is 24," and uh, and really, to be honest with you, it's it's just a series about uh, about vision uh, and about mission and about calling on on our church um, and what's it look like for 24 and who you know who is 24 is definitely a part of that. What is 24, you know? But but really, at the end of the day, it's what is God calling us as a church to do? Who is God calling us the church? to be. And so, um, you know, this morning, uh, this is, uh, again, this is one of those uh, messages I probably have just overthought it and overthought it uh, tenfold, um, you know, as I can do so easily sometimes, and really wrestled with, you know, well, what, you know, what do we pick, you know, and I, do we pick just this one, this one passage and go through it or whatever. And scripture just teaches so much, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm a systematic guy when it comes to uh, teaching and studying. I want to know, you know, all of the things about the thing, you know, or whatever. And so, um, you know, and, and so even with my teaching, I, that's how I approach. I, I, I read through all the, all the scripture, you know, most of it or a lot of it. Um, most of the times on a subject, if I'm, I'm teaching on a subject, so to speak. Uh, and then, you know, and then, you know, what? What is, what is the Lord saying? What is, what is so important? We can't leave it behind. Uh, you know, sometimes this is kind of my approach here. But um, anyway, that being said, uh, you know, today we're talking about uh, the importance of 24 uh, and, and the heart behind serving one another. 
serving one another. And, and you know, serving one another is one of those, it's one of those things that's like, uh, I, think, I think most people that have been around 24 for any length of time know that that's a part of the DNA of who we are. Uh, I hope they do. Uh, you know, if you're new to 24, uh, I hope that you know that it's important for us that we want to serve you. Um, and we want you to be a part of serving others here as, as the body, too. Um, you know, ser- serving people is, is actually one of the easiest possible things that we can do. I mean, it, it is like, you know, I mean, just almost nothing to it. I, but I think most people, I think in most situations where they could serve somebody, aren't thinking about that. You know, and, and here's the truth. We, as just a bunch of sinners, which is what we are, you know, are really good at thinking about us, right? And so, like in, in most moments that we walk into situations, most moments we're thinking about what I need and what I want, right? And, you know, to serve other people, you, you, you have to be the backwards of that. You have to think about that uh, in the opposite way. You have to go into situations saying, what do they need? You know, and, and of course, the truth, one of the truths that we know that they need is we know that they need Jesus. You know, everybody needs Jesus. Um, and so, you know, with that thought in mind, you know, let, let me just let me give you a couple of helpful things, okay? I want to give you a couple of helpful things that maybe will help you in serving others. Of course, there's the mindset, and, and really that comes from a heart change. And we've been studying through the scriptures, and as we've been studying over these last several weeks, one of the things that we've been talking about uh, is that our worship changes everything. What we worship, who we worship, changes everything. If we're worshiping the Lord, if we're growing in our relationship with Him, then He, He, will guide our hearts if we let him, and he will lead us in ways that we haven't been led before. Uh, he will call us to people. He will put people in our lives. We will see people that are in our lives in, in different ways than we've ever seen them before. And, uh, you know, so let me give you just a couple, a couple of things. I know a lot of folks, you know, struggle with just, you know, they're maybe introverted or whatever, and that's okay. Um, you know, with, you know, why, Chris, I don't know how to serve people. I'm not, I'm not good at making conversation. I think we need to talk to people to do that sometimes. This is true, yes. So I want to give you just a couple, like, easy, easy things to put in your, in your basket, and you can take it with you. So the first thing is uh, join them where they are, Okay. Join people where they are. You know, part of, part of Serve Sunday, you know, is uh, the idea that we are joining people where there is a need. Now, sometimes the people aren't there, uh, but a lot of times the people are there. Uh, and the truth is, is that when we are willing to go to people where they are, that makes a big difference. We, we actually had a, we had a family member reach out uh, of a family that their property uh, literally... Um, borders the property of our church property here, of our campus here. And, uh, and it was a family member that lives far away, and they're concerned about their family members that live here close by. And, uh, and they just said, you know, hey, I'm, I'm very concerned. Their health is not good. Would you mind running by and seeing them? And this is somebody that I've talked to in the past, and we've, you know, attempted to, you know, just say, hey, we're here. If you need anything, that kind of thing. And so uh, I kept putting it off, kept putting it off. Finally, this week, this week, I got to go over to their house. Uh, I just dropped in in an afternoon, knocked on the door. Uh, they came to the door. They were never so happy that someone would show up and say hello and just, uh, hey, how's it going? You know, I, I, I don't know them very well at all. I couldn't tell you. I probably couldn't tell you their names if I had to. Uh, you know, I mean, a lot of things like that that we think, oh, I don't know those people good enough to go to their house. You know, don't, don't. Don't talk yourself out of it before you ever get there, okay? Stop doing that, okay? Like when the Lord puts something in front of you, believe me, I, I, and, and listen, I'm, this isn't a Pat Chris on the back. I've been putting this off for like a month and a half. Like it kept messaging, hey, have you gotten to go by? No, I still haven't. I'm so sorry. You know, ran by and knocked on the door, and they knew who I was because we've seen each other out here on the property at times, and I've, you know, talked to them in the past and different things. And uh, knocked on the door, and they said, come on in. And I went in, and we just, just stood right there in the front door just for 10, 15 minutes. You know, and, and, here's, and, and here's the number two thing I'm going to tell you after, you know, uh, you know, join them where they are is the question, how you doing, right? You know it, right? How you doing? 
right? I mean, you can say it like that. Sometimes that's kind of weird if you just drop in on somebody and be like, how are you doing, you know? But, you know, how are you doing invites a conversation if you don't say, how are you doing, and then like look the other way like you don't really care, but it invites a conversation if you are caring to say, I want you to share with me what is going on in your life right now. I mean, it, it is as simple as asking just basic questions. And that basic question by itself will get you a long way. This, this, Friday night, I gotta tell you, this is kind of funny. Uh, a Friday night, I haphazardly kind of ended up serving uh, some folks Friday night. So uh, I had been working uh, down East Nashville at the location thing that I've shared with you guys that I'm uh, a part of right now. And uh, I've got some equipment there or whatever. And uh, had been there that afternoon messing with some stuff or whatever. My guys were working on stuff. And I was just going in to check on things or whatnot. And, and then uh, my family was going to come pick me up. And we were going to go grab some food together in Nashville because Gracie uh, was a part of a uh, mock trial downtown at the courthouse. Uh, and so uh, we were going to pick her up when she was done with that. And that was going to be 8, 30, 9 o'clock in the evening. So we said, well, hey, let's just go grab some food and then we'll go get her. And so that's what we did. And so my family came and picked me up. I left my car um, at, the, at the location and then, we, and then we went on. And then after we ate and picked her up and they brought me back to my car, uh, you know, I said, well, I'm going to, you know, I, I walked some of the kids in that need to use the bathroom because you got seven kids. They always need to use the bathroom, okay? And so the... <laughs> The, the biggest reason we used to drive through the night to go on vacation was just to try to, like, get as far as we could without having to stop at another loves. Um, but um, anyway, uh, so uh, I, I walk some of them in. Well, then they, they go on out, and I, I end up getting in a conversation. And I have I mentioned this before. I have made friends with the security guards, and I had just been hanging out with them that day. And, and they are, like, all there. I never see them all there, but they had a big, they had a big show uh, that was playing in the music venue uh, in the back uh, Friday night, and, and they had been talking to me about it, and I was a little intrigued about the kind of music it was, and kind of wanted to hear just a little bit of it or something, you know, and so I walked, walked back to the venue, and ended up talking with them again, and, uh, you know, I just, I just ended up standing there, and there was a guy that, he's wearing a security shirt, and uh, I hadn't really gotten to know him yet, and I've gotten to know the others fairly well, and, and I said, uh, I said, hey, I'm Chris. And he's like, oh, yeah, we met a while ago. You know, I hadn't seen you much. I was like, oh, okay. It's like, so we start chit-chatting. And I was like, so how are you doing? And, and he just, you know, he just started sharing just random stuff going on in life or whatever. And, and um, real quickly, you know, I, I started to realize, like, there's a lot of people coming. And he's work, basically working uh, the front gate, if you will. Uh, and so everybody's got to show him ID as they're walking in. There's a little spill that you got to say. Uh, no smoking in the building and all this random stuff or whatever. And so uh, then I noticed it was like two of them doing it, and then one of them had to go do something else. And I just kind of like jumped into the role. And so I just started doing it. And so, you know, people are coming in, and I'm like, hey, uh, no smoking, no vapes inside the venue. You just place outside for any of that. We don't want to have to come get you. You know, I'm just like looking at people. I'm like staring at them like, don't make us come get you, right? Okay. And, uh, <laughs> and so I, what I thought I was going to do for like five minutes or something while they were using the bathroom, uh, they, well, they, first of all, I saw them like come out of the bathroom. They waved and like took off running, and they were gone. And I was like, oh, okay, well, I don't have to walk them back out, I don't guess. And so uh, what ended up being like I thought it was going to be like a few minutes, I ended, up, I ended up doing this for like an hour, you know. And, and what was so funny was like other security guys come walking by, they'd be like, what are you doing? I was like, I'm volunteer security tonight. <laughs> Let me just tell you, people could not appreciate you more for you to show up at something they don't want to be doing as a job and helping them voluntarily and trying to help them have a good time. Like, it, 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 we ha I had a blast. I had a blast. And let me tell you what, the people watching wasn't bad either, you know. It was a, uh, what was it, an uh, electronic EDM show. You can go look that up. Uh, you know, I had to. Uh, so, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, it's, it's just funny. Like, God puts us in these situations. And listen, I, I don't, again, not, don't pat me on the back. 
uh, for that or whatever. I just kind of found myself in a situation and realized, you know what, we're having fun. Uh, they could use a hand. Uh, but it dawned on me, like, through that process, like, how much this really was meaning to them. And, and you know, some of it because they were saying so, like, man, thank you for your help. You know, I'm like, yeah, you know, well, I'm here. You know, why not? You know, I think for us as believers, we have lots of opportunities and it's just a matter of taking them when they come to us. I want to share with you Mark 10, 42. Mark 10, 42, if you've got a Bible, get it out and, and we'll go there. If you don't have a Bible, our ushers can bring you one. Just throw your hand up, let them know you need it. If you don't own one, you can keep that one. Uh, but Mark 10, 42, we see this passage that I think sets the stage for us so importantly of, of Christ himself. Uh, and, and so it says this, it says, And Jesus called them to him and said to them, you know that those who are considered rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them. But it shall not be so among you. But whoever would be great among you must be your servant, and whoever would be first among you must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. This is so opposite of the culture that we live in, where everything is about us. Because, and, and, and you realize why we think that way, right? It's because we're constantly being sold. We're constantly being sold you need this. This will make your life better. We're going to make this faster. We're going to make this easier on you. You know, I mean, everything in our culture these days is selling us that we are, we are number one and that what we need is number one. And the truth is, is that Jesus himself did not come to be served, but came himself to serve. Jesus even uses this moment to, you know, as a teaching thing of saying, you know, hey, you know, if you want to be great, you know, well, then you need to be a servant. You know, it's not, it's not as the authorities do. We're not those people. That's not what we're about. And this is, this is our calling. Jesus spends his whole ministry. I've talked about this several times. Jesus spends his whole ministry talking about serving others, loving others, caring for others. Whoever will be great must be your servant, slave to all. Jesus came not just to serve and not to be served, but literally to give his life. Verse 45, for even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. And so, you know, we have this just amazing picture of Christ uh, in his humility. And furthermore, let's just keep going. Matthew 25, verse 35 Matthew 25, verse 35, it says this. It says, For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you? or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick and in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, verse 40, the king will answer them, truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. Jesus is giving us a picture of what it, like, what, what it looks like for us to be him in this world. This is, this is an amazing thing. This, this chance that we have to do something that is so easy and opposite of culture, because every, you know, most everybody these days is out for themselves. Let's just, you know, you know we got we to gotta get ours and get out. You know, that's what we're thinking. That's what I'm thinking anytime I'm walking toward a target. I got like, to get mine and get out. You know, especially if I'm with my family. I'm like, you guys can stay in the car. I got this in like five seconds. I'll be right back. You know, whatever. This, this picture for us shows a going. It shows ascending 
Hungry and gave me food. Thirsty and you gave me drink. Stranger and you welcomed me. Naked and clothed me. Sick and you visited me. Was in prison and you came to me. This goes along with what I was saying earlier with join them where they are. God's calling you to a people. Join them where you are. I, I had a chance. I, I've shared this before. I, I had a chance many years ago uh, to, take a, to take another church. I had a church come after me, and I didn't realize they were coming after me. I thought they were wanting my help with some stuff, and we were all buddy-buddy, and it was great, and I made some great friends out of it or whatever. And, uh, you know, but in the end, the, the thing that kept me here was that, like, God just kept putting the faces of people on my heart that I couldn't leave. Like, God was saying, like, no, no, you've you got to stay with this person and that person, and in their lives. God calls us to a people. He calls us to a people. We see that all through Scripture, that God calls people to people. You know, people groups. Sometimes He calls people like, hey, you need to move, and you need to go over there and be with that people. And that's great. You know, if God calls you to do that, then do it. Don't you dare take like, you know, don't even twitch on it. Just, I mean, just like go for it, you know? And what we see here is we see God calling us to people, to go to people where they are. And then in verse 40 he says, Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. You see what he's saying with the least of these. With, if you did it to one of the least of these. These. He's saying, if you take the one situation out of the whole bunch of you serving people in your whole life, the one situation that you think that wasn't important, he's saying, you did that for me. You did that for me. And we need to hear that. We need to hear that because we have so many moments in life. I was just having a conversation. I'm feeling convicted right now about uh, you know, about, you know, just, you know, how it's so easy to question why God puts us in circumstances and think, oh, well, I'm not supposed to be there. I'm not supposed to do that or whatever, you know, or it didn't really matter. It always matters. Anytime we get the chance to serve others in the name of Jesus, it matters. What's done for the least of these is done for him. 1 Peter 4, 1 Peter 4, verse 10, it says this. It says, as each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. Whoever speaks as one who speaks oracles of God, whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that God supplies, in order that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to him belong glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. God has given you gifts. God has given you gifts. What will you do with them? Will you hoard them? Will you take them home and put them on a shelf and just pretend like he didn't really give you that for a reason? Don't do that. Let God use the talents, the abilities, the wisdom that you have in this life. He has given you those things. And not only that, but He's called us to be good stewards of it. It's right there, verse 10. Use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's grace. Use it to serve one another. We serve by His strength. I love that part of verse 11. Whoever speaks as one who speaks oracles of God, whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that God supplies. I haven't, you know, I'm just having this conversation. Everybody I've talked to this morning, I think, just about said the same exact thing. How, how, I, did, I did the, how you, how you doing? You know, I didn't say it like that, but, you know. I said, how you doing? Everybody said the same thing. You know what it was? Tired. 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 I, I've covered snooze buttons with at least two two people in here right now. Uh, you know, uh, I, I too was snooze button this morning. You know, uh, I mean, we're, we're tired. We're tired people. You know, 
And, and, and so much of, I think, what happens for us is, again, we talk ourselves out of it before we ever get to the starting line because when we get the opportunity, we're like, oh, man, it's either what? I'm too busy or I'm too tired. And man, we've got to stop and just, and just and realize, like, what's happening to us? What's happening to our lives? That we could step back especially in the light of things going on in this world right now, to be able to step back and go, okay, all right, all right, Lord, what, what, do, you, what do you call me to? I don't, I don't even know if I can do that right now. Well, according to verse 11, whoever speaks is one who speaks oracles of God. Whoever serves is one who serves by the strength that God supplies in order that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. That's different news. That's not our strength. That's God's strength. Like all we have to do is say yes. All we have, I, I, know you've, I know you've probably been in these moments where you've had an opportunity to maybe go do something, serve somebody, and, and like, I mean, even maybe you're just like trying to talk yourself into whether or not you're going to actually get out of the car or just turn around and go home. We've all had those moments, okay? Even as a pastor, I still have those moments sometimes where I'm like, you know, eh, there's other people kind of doing this. I, I just go home. Probably not any good here. Probably worthless in this moment here, you know? If we say yes, we're saying yes to the Lord using His strength to work through us that's supernatural junk right there, by the way, folks. That in everything, He might be glorified. That He would be made known. That's huge. That is huge for us today. Like, I just, I just think that we forget. I think that we forget. We make it about us. We make it about what we can do, what we think we're capable of doing and whatnot. And the truth is that it's so much more than that. It's so much more than that. We all have been given gifts. We've all been called to be good stewards of it. And we can all serve by His strength, not our own, to let God do something special through us. You know what happens when we do it and it's all us? We get cocky. We get cocky. When we're not willing to come under the authority of God himself, or maybe even under authority of someone else that God's put over us, we start getting cocky. And it causes us to find ourselves in a place where we're unhappy. And the truth is, is we're missing God doing something special through us. His strength, his working, his glory. It's not about us. You, we, we might be a specialist you know, it's something, but the truth is not about us. In fact, there's a good example, and I love this, by the way. Uh, we have a couple of guys here that are plumbers, and uh, I won't point them out, JR and Josh, uh, but um, uh, if you need anybody. Uh, but uh, we, both, both of these guys have graciously offered time and help uh, with uh, the Hope Center Shower House, which we're, we'll be talking about that over in the next week, and we're going to try to finish this thing out. We'll be, we'll be in touch next weekend about some of that. Uh, but uh, and by the way, thank you to, to both these guys, especially Jr. He's helped lead out on this project in, in such a huge, huge way. Uh, he probably hates me some days for that. Uh, but um, needless to say, when we were there uh, all together at one point working, uh, the jokes that were being thrown back and forth about who is the best plumber, you know, was the was the uh, I, I'm not. They were they were both going. I'm not the best plumber. He, they're they're the best plumber. You know, they were both kind of like throwing it back. You know, the other way. Uh, but, you know, that, that attitude, that's, that's the attitude we got to have. It's not, I mean, these guys are both like super specialists in their field. Like, I know, I have seen their work. Both of them have worked at my house, okay? And so, you know, the, the amazing thing here is, is that when God takes something that we're talented at, gifted at, knowledgeable at, and we don't make it about us, but let him work through us, then it's not about us. It's about Him. It's about His glory. 
It's about Him being made known. Nancy Johnson has been talking. By the way, Nancy's, Nancy had a hip replacement uh, this past week. Um, she is part of the uh, hipster crew that we've got in our church right now. Your church might be getting a little older when multiple people are having hip replacements on the same day. <laughs> Love you, Rich. Um, anyway, Na- Nancy's been talking with, uh, for the last month or so, a couple months, I think. She's been talking literally with everybody that serves on a Sunday morning. She's been trying to. Maybe she hasn't gotten to you. Uh, but for many of you, I'm sure you could testify that she has come to you and she's asked some questions and she's just, you know, probing and, hey, how, you know, tell me about what you do and why you do it and, uh, you know, do you need help and some of those kinds of things. And uh, as she has been doing that, she has learned one thing, and that is that literally everybody on a Sunday morning that we have serving in ministry here uh, says, I would love to have more help. Everybody, from the parking lot to greeters to kids' workers, uh, everybody. Our students on Wednesday nights, every, everybody, everybody. And it's, and it's caused us just to be just in prayer and thinking over, God, what do you, what do you want to do here? What, do you, what are you trying to do here? And, uh, you know, one of the things that we've identified is, you know, in kids' rooms, um, you know, they're... There are oftentimes families that come really early. If you're a visiting family, a lot of times you go somewhere early because, like, you don't know your way around and you want to figure things out. One of the things that we've learned is we still have some folks that like to operate on the old 24 time. You you know what I mean by that, right? People have been around for a minute. They know what I mean by that. Uh, run Run a little behind, whatever, you know. And, uh, and by the way, it's not, I'm not busting anybody out with this, by the way. I'm so grateful for everybody that serves. Uh, but, but one of the things that we've learned is that we have seen new families that have come, and they get here early, and nobody's in those rooms, and some of those families have just left. They don't stay. They don't stay for worship or, or anything. Uh, and this is from some of our staff members actually watching. They've, you know, kind of zoned in on, on this happening and tried to talk to folks and that kind of thing, but, you know, stuff happens. And it's, you know, it's just like, it's a culture change thing. It's just one of those things. You know, but the truth is, it's even bigger than that, is, is that there's just need. There's just need for folks that, that love children and love Jesus and feel God saying to them, hey, you can be a part of ministering to these kids. You know, one th- we're going we're to talk next week about what the future holds for 24, okay, specifically. And, and one of the questions that I'm getting a lot right now is, what about the bus ministry? What are we going to do with the bus ministry? And, and here's the truth about the bus ministry. I, I wholeheartedly believe that we're going to do the bus ministry one day. If we did the bus ministry today, we don't have enough kids workers to handle the children that we would bring. So what we need is we need people that are as passionate about a bus ministry to be as passionate about being with those children while they're here now and to help us prepare for the moment in which God allows us to be able to do that, do that ministry. Um, students, Wednesday nights. On Wednesday nights, any Wednesday night, I, I, I encourage you to come up and see what happens. Come see all the teenagers that come and invade this building on, Tuesday, on Wednesday nights. On Wednesday nights, we have roughly anywhere from 50 to 100 teenagers here. Uh, and they come, and they have a worship service, and they break out into small groups uh, after the worship service is over with, after Jason teaches and all that. Um, and, uh, and then they, they get one-on-one with leaders who are willing to just spend time with them. I'm sure Jason would love to have more leaders uh, to help do that. Uh, I know for a fact that he would love to have some folks that are just willing to come and help keep an eye on things. We have cameras everywhere. You know, I mean, the, the camera thing is a great thing, but the truth is, is that, you know, the ca- even though cameras are watching, it doesn't mean that someone's watching the cameras all the time, right? You know, and, and the truth is, is that we really do. We really do actually need people that would just be willing to be here on Wednesday nights to help and serve by just being security. How you doing? You know, 
kind of thing, whatever. Uh, but the truth is, I know, that, I know, again, he could use more leaders that are willing to just, just do the one-on-one, junior high girls or junior high boys or senior high girls or senior high boys and just sit with kids and ask. All you got to do is sit with them and ask questions. He, I think he even gives you the questions you know, uh, of just, you know, hey, here's some things that we talked about tonight. What did you guys think about that? And then just being able to pray with them and care for them. Uh, Let me tell you what, that ministry is so important in our church. I mean, it's so important in our church. And I'll I'll just tell you, from the standpoint of of a guy who was a youth guy many years ago, it, it feels like sometimes you are on an island and at times can feel like, and this is a lie that Satan loves to sell us on, sometimes can feel like nobody really cares. We want to come behind that ministry and serve well. God is calling us. Ministry is not just important, but it's fun. It's fun. I, I had fun the other night playing security guard for an hour. I had fun. I even got recognized by at least one person as the pastor at the Church 24, as they call it, you know? bottom line is that uh, God has called so many people. Many of you are already serving in so many ways. I would ask if you would to pray with me that God would continue to speak to the hearts of other people, that God might lead them to serve as a part of the body here, that we could be the team that God has called us to here. Uh, somewhere in the mix, uh, you know, if, 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 you, if you feel like God has called you to be at 24 as your church home, pray about where you might serve pray that you pray about not just coming to worship but that God wants to use your talents he wants to use your wisdom uh, to serve others maybe you took a break somewhere along the way or maybe you retired from serving don't do that don't do that there's no retirement to serving the Lord find ways in which you can serve the Lord don't see it on the list on the thing in front of you in the seat that's fine Come talk to us. We want to help you find a place to serve. But the truth is is that I think there pretty much is opportunity all around us. God's doing something right now. He's doing something right now. He's been doing something. I know this because I feel attacked. I feel like the church has been under attack for weeks. And I always know that when that's going on, it's because God is up to something. And that the kingdom of God is going to be advanced because of that thing going on. And with that being said, it just, it just, I just know, I know God's up to something. I want to read this little mission statement to you. It says, 24 Church, this is on our website, 24 Church exists to exalt the name of Jesus Christ in our city and the world. We want to be a community that lives wholly surrendered to Jesus by sharing and displaying the grace, love, power, reconciliation, and truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are a community of believers who live on God's mission to make disciples as we are empowered by the Holy Spirit. We believe that. We believe that that's a big part of the mission of what God has called us to. Philippians 2 Verse 1 says this. So if there's any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. That means that we're together, together doing this together, okay? Verse 3, do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. That's that opposite-minded thing that we were just talking about. In verse 4, it says, let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ. Jesus is saying, have the mind of Christ. Have the mind of Christ as you approach other people in life as you're doing that go to where they are and you're asking how you're doing that you care we don't this isn't something this isn't a fake it till you make it kind of thing here this is like we do this because we care we do this because God has cared for us to send Jesus to us to love us to care for us and we in turn can love and care for others verse 6 who though was in the form of God did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant being born in the likeness of men 
And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death, on a cross. Paul starts out in the very part of that, first first part of that says, complete my joy, verse 2, being of the same mind. Complete my joy. I want to be happy. I think we all want to be happy. I think where where so many of us miss being happy is we miss putting on the mind of Christ in how we approach others, serve others, love others. But that comes with joy. If we're not doing it out of guilt, okay? If we're not doing it like it's a job, it comes out of joy. It comes out of the joy that Jesus himself has for us. Jesus himself humbled himself, gave his life as a ransom for many, becoming obedient to death, even death on the cross, taking the form of a servant. He's asking us to put aside selfishness and in humility put others before ourselves to be into their interests and not our own. To care about who they are, to go where they are, to ask how they're doing. Galatians 5.13 says, Through love, serve one another. Through love, serve one another. Jesus gave it all, emptied himself on the cross for me, for you, for them. Will you serve them with me? Let's pray. God, it is a lot some days just to feel like we can get done what we're supposed to do. Lord, I I pray that we would look at our lives a little differently than that. I pray that you would help us look at our lives a little differently than that. I pray that you would help us to see the importance of of putting you first and see where that's going. God, I pray that you would help us to be faithful to you, faithful to your word, faithful to your call on our lives. Lord, help us to see how we can serve others in the moment. And God, help us to be faithful in the moment. That God, you could use those moments, Lord, to show your light, that you would be glorified, not us. Draw people near to you. God, I pray, Lord, that you would use it to tear down the walls that people have of what they think about us or, Lord, be encouraged in the struggle that they're in. Whatever it may be, God, use it and use it for your glory. Be made known in those moments in our lives. Help us to be the people you've called us to be. Lord, for anyone that hasn't ever trusted in you, God, I pray that today you would speak to their heart. God, that they would see and understand, maybe like they never have before, Lord, the ransom that was paid for the death that was deserved for our sin, Lord, that, Lord, you sent your son to do that for us, and he did, and he came, and he served, and he gave, and literally gave his life. God, thank you. Thank you for Jesus. God, I pray, Lord, that we would take note of what you've done for us, God, and that we would do it for others, God, that we would serve, that we would love, that we would care. God, thank you for all these things. We ask it in his name.